All right, so the first thing that we need to do to set up this um, bullet impact system that gives us proper, you know, gouges or craters with good depth is uh, we need to set up uh, our geometry. Now, in this case, you can see I've, uh, I've got some very simple uh, bullet holes here, some craters. Now, the nice thing about these guys, is, as you can see, they've got some real depth to them. Um, this isn't just going to be a decal that gets layered over uh, things. This is going to give me proper, you know, deep parallax. Um, what I need to do now, though, is set up a nice double-sided shader so that I only see the parts of this that I want to see. I only want to see the, essentially the fronts of these surfaces. I don't want to see uh, the sides of these surfaces. Um, now, if I render now, you know, this is pretty much we, what we'd expect to see. We can see the entire profile. This is the color channel. We can see the alpha channel. We see everything. Um, what we're going to do here is the color channel I'm not too worried about. We can just see this the way it is. Um, what I want my alpha channel to do for me though is to hide the profile. I want the alpha channel to essentially give me holdout so I only see into the um, the forward parts of the surface. And the uh, nice thing about it is it's actually relatively easy to set up. Alright, so I'm just going to open the Hypershade and create a Lambert material. Although this will work with um, you know most of the surface shaders. Um, all right, and I'm going to call this Lambert Crater, and I'm going to map it with a noise node. I'm going to use Perlin noise with a frequency of about four, and just make sure that. Assign, assign material to selection. All right, and let's render. All right, so that's not bad. Um, I mean, all I want is, you know, a little, you know, noise texture in here. Again, our alpha is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's save that. All right. Okay, so if we take a look here, if we uh, look at our lamp of material and we go down to matte opacity, we can see that the matte opacity value by default is set to 1. If I bring that down to say 0.5, close enough, go back to our render view here, look at our alpha channel. So this is what our matte opacity looked like with a value of 1. Um, let me just render a section there. With a matte opacity value of about 1 half, we can see we've got 50% uh, matte opacity. If I bring this down some more, we'll see it'll be that much darker. I can bring it way down. Matte opacity is going to be very low. This would not give me much of a holdout. I can go way up. It's going to be much brighter. Throughout, you can see if we look at the uh, color channel, this is not affecting the color channel in any way. It's strictly affecting the alpha channel. Um, now if I take that all the way back up, render, now we're at 100% alpha again. All right, so that's fine. Uh, that's good to know, but uh, you know that's uh, only going to take me so far. Um, what I want is I want the alpha to be treated um, uh, or to, to be affected based on a, a given condition. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, or next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to create from general utilities. I'm going to create a condition node, and I'm going to call this condition underscore fn for flipped normal. Uh, condition nodes are great. Um, they're very flexible. Basically, what they do is they let you. Um, evaluate um, two terms and uh, output colors. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the out color from my condition node to my matte opacity. All right, so let me just middle mouse drag that over. Now, because matte opacity is not a, a, uh, a vector value, where's matte opacity? Matte opacity. Um, I can't connect out color. So what I'm going to connect is the single value out color R. So I'm going to connect that to matte opacity. So now if we render, so this is what it looked like before. This is what my alpha looked like before. If I render now, see now my alpha is completely gone. My color channel, like always, is, is fine. It's unaffected, but my alpha channel is completely missing. Uh, the reason for that is if we take a look at our condition node, we can see what's happening. All right, so let's see what's happening with the condition node. The condition node has, like I mentioned, two terms, first term and second term, and an operation. So right now, uh, the condi condition node is saying, OK, does the first term equal the second term? Well, yes, it does. 0 equals 0. So um, 
it returns the color if true. So color if true in this case in the red channel is zero or black. Um, so that's why when we look at our render, our alpha is all black, it's all gone. If I change this, if I say I change my color if true to let's say 0.333. Now when I render, now when I render, here, let's just now my alpha is about one third. Because what's happening is because this condition is true, Maya is passing this value, 0.333, to my mat opacity. If I you know bump that up to say 0.999 and I render again. Now it's going to be almost 100% because this value is being passed on. All right, well, I'm going to set my color of true to uh, 100%. Now, obviously, I don't want my color of true, my color of false to be the same, so I'm going to set color of false to zero and render that. All right, well, right now, this is working out, uh, well, it, it's working. Um, if my first term um, and, uh, matches my second term, I pass white uh, to the mat opacity. Um, but that's not exactly what I want to do. So what I'm going to do now though, because I need to control when this alpha is uh, white and when it's black, um, I need a little bit more control over changing my first and my second term. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, this is another really valuable node, I'm going to create, a, whoops, under general utilities, I'm going to create a sampler info node. Sampler info node is great because what it does is it returns all sorts of information about what's happening at render time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just, gonna, again, I'm going to hook up my sampler info node to my condition node. So I'm going to go, in this case, flipped normal. I'm going to connect flipped normal to my first term. Close that. Now what does flipped normal do? If we take a look at one of our pieces of geo here, this polygon, if I display its face normals, so now we can see that the you know the inside the front of my uh, my crater here, this is the uh, you know the normal positive side, uh, whereas the back side of my my crater is kind of the normal negative side or the flipped normal side. Um, so what's happening in my shading network here is the sampler info node because I've hooked up my flipped normal flip normal to my first term. So what happens now is at render time, Maya says, okay, when I'm rendering a pixel, it looks at this pixel and it says, okay, is the surface contained within this pixel, um, is this normal flipped or, or not? If it's normal is flipped, then it returns an answer of, of one, true. So um, if we've got a flipped normal, then this value would be 1. Um, so does 1 equal 0? No, it doesn't. So in that case, if we're looking at a backside, if we're rendering a backside, the condition would be false. So it would pass a, um, a value of 0 to it. But if um, the uh, flipped normal, or if we're rendering a pixel that doesn't have a flipped normal, that will pass the... the um, sampler info node will pass a value of zero. So would, does zero equal zero? Yes, it does. So in that case, the condition is true. Um, so my would pass a value of one to the mat opacity. So let's try that out. So if we open this and we render again, again, let's look at our, alpha, our, our color channel. So here's our color channel. If we render now, so here's our color channel. If we look at our alpha channel, see what's happening? And this is really nice. So wherever we've got a, a backside of the surface with, with, say, a flipped normal, our mat opacity is zero. But wherever um, we do not have a flipped normal, wherever we're looking at the normal positive side, we've got nice, strong alpha. So the great thing about this is this gives us great holdout. So we can do a render like this. So now here's our color channel, and again, I don't care about this because when we look at the alpha channel, that's all cut out. Um, so yeah, so we're 
uh, pretty much uh, good to go there. So now um, these pieces of geometry with this nice simple double-sided shader and there's definitely more that you can do with double-sided shaders you can get much more complicated but in this case we don't need to um, so yeah so now we're in good shape to incorporate this simple geometry with a simple double-sided shader into a particle instanced um, dynamic uh, simulation and we're in good shape